physics nerds, this is the video in which I go over last year's physics region. I'm going to break this up into four parts, just like the exam is broken up into four parts. This part, we're going to go over part A, which contains 35 multiple choice questions. And here we start with number one, which quantity is a vector? So first we need to know the difference between scalars and vectors. Okay, so scalars only have magnitude, whereas vectors have magnitude and direction. So you think about arrows. Those are vectors. You could represent vector quantities with arrows. Okay, so let's look at our choices. Power, speed, kinetic energy, and weight. So each of these we have to look and see. For speed, it's a scalar. If we think of S and V, speed, velocity, scalar is the speed. Kinetic energy and power are all related to energy, and energy is a scalar. It has no direction. So that leaves us with weight. Because weight is a type of force, and we represent forces with arrows. Okay, number two, a 65 kilogram astronaut weighs 630 newtons at the surface of the Earth. What is the mass? The astronaut. Here they gave us the mass on Earth, 65 kilograms, looking for the mass on the moon. Well, mass never changes, it's still 65 kilograms. Mass never changes, it's not equal to weight. Let me indicate here, mass is not equal to weight. Mass never changes, weight does, depending on gravity. Number three, when the sum of all the forces acting on a block in an inclined plane is zero, sum of all the forces is zero. So we're talking about net force. So this leads into equilibrium. When we're at equilibrium, we have two different states. Either we're at rest or moving with constant speed. So looking at our choices, we can't say that it's at rest. It can be, but it's not a must. Must be accelerating, that's false. Maybe slowing down, that's false. So it may be moving at a constant speed. Number four, the greatest increase in the inertia. So here, let's think that inertia is equal to mass. So we're looking for the greatest increase in mass for the greatest increase in inertia. That's choice one. Inertia is unaffected by anything else, it's just mass. Or number five. Oh, careful with the wording here. This is an example of Newton's third law. Okay, a hundred kilogram cart accelerates to that as a horse exerts a force of 60 newtons west on the cart. What is the magnitude that the cart exerts on the horse? This answer is also 60 newtons. How? Newton's third law, uh, equal but opposite in direction. So horse on the cart is 60 newtons, whereas the cart on the horse is also 60 newtons. They're just opposite in direction. Number six, sound waves are described as Mechanical and longitudinal. This you just have to know. Light is the opposite. It's electromagnetic and transverse. Number seven is going to ask us to do dummy variables. How do we do that? So here our original force is that much. And it says the distance between the charges is then doubled. Electrostatic force is this. So my strategy is to tell you guys to plug everything as one. For simplicity and get that equals one now what happens when you double the distance still plug everything in as one except for the change so we're doubling our distance here we should get one over four so here the change is quartered so if our original force is this much we got to divide it by four and we get this much as our answer 
We're looking to see how much the force has changed when you double the distance. This also makes sense with the physics in that when you separate them even further, the force is weakened. Think like magnets. Number eight. Okay, so we gotta think about momentum. Conservation of momentum. P initial is equal to P final. The, init the total before is equal to total after. So here we have a blue lab car traveling west collides with and sticks to a red lab car traveling east. Okay, so the magnitude of the blue car before the collision is 2 meters per second. It's going west. So we have the blue card going, oops, that's supposed to be, we have the blue card going west with two kilograms meters per second, and the red card is going three east. We gotta add up what they were before. So keep in mind the arrows indicate direction. So our total before is equal to positive three, take east as positive and then minus two because we take west as negative and our total is one kilogram meters per second before now if before equals after then our answer is still also one kilogram meters per second before equals after choice one all right number nine this one's a little tricky. Which arrow best represents direction in which friction acts on the ball at point P? So think that friction is something that acts against motion. So in our horizontal direction, if the ball is moving this way, then friction, okay, actually, if the ball at point P is moving this way, then overall friction will act in the opposite direction going the other way, choice two. 10, a magnetic field will be produced by a beam of what? So magnetic fields need moving charges. We did a lab in which we used the circuit to create a magnet. Circuits have moving charges. They need moving charges. So the only thing that shows that is protons. Protons are charges, and if they are moving, then it produces a magnetic field. Number 11, the diagram below represents the electric field between two spheres, A and B. So if we notice, they're pointing inward and they're not touching, they're repelling each other. If they're both pointing in the same direction, that means they're the same charge. Now, if you think about what I tell you, only always tell you in class, positives radiate out, negatives suck in happiness. So positives radiate happiness, negatives suck in happiness. If the arrows are pointing inward, that means they're both negative. Choice three. 12, a horizontal force of 20 newtons eastward causes a 10 kilogram box to have a displacement of that many meters eastward. The total work on the box by the force is, so this is pretty simple. Work is equal to force times distance. Distance of five meters. That's a hundred joules. A block initially at rest is accelerated. A fifteen joules of work is done on the block. Then the kinetic energy of the block increases by what? So the work you do to move the box it is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. So you release all that energy as work. The box absorbs it to give it kinetic energy. So if you give it 15 joules of work, then your change in kinetic energy will also be 15 joules. Two objects A and B are held one meter above the horizontal ground. The mass of B is twice as great as the mass of A. Okay. So for this question, potential energy is equal to mgh. So this is dependent on mass. For A, it's just that. For B, you have double the mass. So this is double the potential energy. 
15, we're just calculating for kinetic energy. Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. 1 half 55 kilograms times 9 meters per second. And you square the v, just the v. And you should get an answer of? Should be approximately choice 3. Okay. Number 16. We have that many hertz frequency of a wave tra traveling through a transparent medium. The main factor that determines the speed of the wave is always the nature of the medium. So light, sound, any kind of wave, they change their speed depending on the material they're traveling through. Light travels fastest through air, sound travels fastest through solids. If you change the material they're going through, it's going to change its speed. It's always that. Okay. Number 17, a motor does that total of 480 joules in 5 seconds. Average power developed by the motor is, so power is equal to work over time. We have 480 joules of work over 5 seconds. And we should get 480 divided by 5. That's about um, 96 watts. There we go. 18. Here we have power, we have a force, a weight, and we're looking for speed. This is a, a different definition of power that's not commonly used, but it's on the reference table still. Power is equal to F times V. This is on the back of the reference table. So we got... that many watts with this many... Newtons, and we're looking for the velocity, we should get 2.8 meters per second. 19. We should think Doppler effect, because we have waves, moving waves, and basically changing in frequencies and wavelengths. So a stationary police officer directs radio waves about a vehicle moving toward the officer. So we're comparing what happens what when it's moving towards. So when you're moving towards the source or the observer, then the wavelengths compress. So wavelengths shorten and the frequency goes up. So you have higher frequency. A light wave strikes the moon and reflects toward the earth as the light wave travels from the the wave carries energy only. Waves carry only energy. 21 is a definition kind of question. The time required to produce one cycle of a wave is known as the wave's period. So period is basically seconds per wave. All right, 22, we're talking about magnetism. So we're looking at the best explanation for the production of a force that causes the needle to move. So magnetic compasses, think magnetic forces and magnetic fields. So once again, magnetic fields need moving charges or currents. So the reason why it started to move when you turned on the circuit is because of, if you look at each of these choices, it's got to be choice four. The current in the wire produces a magnetic field that exer exerts a force on the compass needle. It's the only one that follows our definition for magnetic fields. All right, 23. A beam of monochromatic light with that given frequency has a wavelength of that in air. What is the wavelength of this light in lucite? So we haven't exactly covered something like this, but this is still on the reference, reference table. And you're going to see something like this. Because we're only talking about the material and the wavelength, we're going to use these two parts. And because the answer choices are nanometers, you don't have to convert it to meters. So air is the 1.0, but lucite is. So if you take a look right here, I have the absolute indices of refraction taken directly from the reference table. 
and there's no unit for n value. So first we need to look up the value for lucite in air. So air is right here, 1.0, and lucite's over here, 1.5. So let's plug it in. 1.5 over 1.0 is equal to the wavelength in air is 589, so we make it sure we're going corresponding wavelengths. Okay, this let's toss this over to the side. Solve for wavelength, and you get 589 divided by 1.5. You get lambda 2 is equal to about 393 nanometers. 24, if the amplitude of a sound wave is increased, so think amplitude for sound is equal to volume. So there's an increase in the sound's loudness, so it just gets louder. Number 25, oh, let's get this to a stable way. In the diagram below, point P is located in an electric field between two obsolete charged power plates. Compared to the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force of an electron placed at point P, so pretend we have an electron here. And then we also have a proton placed at point P. The elect Since they're both the same distance away, it's going to be the same magnitude. So they're, they're both equidistant from the plates. And they also have the same charge. Now the direction is going to be opposite. The proton is going to go downward, the electron is going to go upward. So same magnitude but opposite direction, choice two. Number 26, the effect produced when two or more sound waves pass through the same point simultaneously is called interference. That one you just got to know. Okay, 27, gamma ray and microwaves. We're comparing gamma ray to microwave. The microwave, the microwave is over here on this side. It has a longer wavelength than gamma rays. Gamma rays have 10 to the negative 13th wavelength and 10 to the negative 2 for microwaves. That's longer for the microwave. So microwaves have longer wavelength, cross off 1 and 2. Now, what about the energy? Energy is related to frequency for this type of wave. So let's look over here. Gamma rays have high frequency. Microwaves have lower frequency. So we see this inverse relationship. So microwaves having lower frequency, meaning lower energy. So it's choice three, longer wavelength and lower energy and less energy. Number 28, according to the standard model of particle physics, that means we have to look at the reference table. Okay, we're looking for the neutrino. Neutrinos, we gotta look at this section right here. It's not in the quarks, but we do find it here in this section, the leptons. So it has to be a lepton. If you know how to use these reference tables, you could probably get through half of this regions. Number 29, which combination of quarks produces a neutral baryon? Okay, so we look at this same section right here. Baryons need three quarks. Each choice has three quarks. Now if you see each of these here, they have symbols. You look here for the quarks. Now each of these quarks comes with a charge. So each combination of three, you just add up all their charges. For example, choice one, C, T, and S. Charm, top, and strange. You add these three numbers up, and you should get a positive one for C, T, S. But that's not our answer. D, S, B. Down, strange, bottom. That leads to negative one. Num choice three, U, D, S. Up, down, strange. That does lead to zero, so that's our answer. If you do UST, that leads to positive 2E, so that's not our answer either. So it's still choice three. Number 30, when you have that much mass converted to energy, we're going to see how much energy is released. So you're using E equals MC squared. Our mass is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 16 kilograms times the speed of light squared. You can find on the reference table. 
Don't forget to square that, and you should get 1.8 times 10 to the first power, choice 2. So this happens to be 18 joules, which is choice 2. Number 31, a ball is hit straight up with an initial speed of 28 meters per second. What is the speed of the ball 2.2 seconds after it is hit? All right, this is kinematics right here. Straight up, speed, we're looking for the final velocity after it is hit, 2.2 seconds. Okay, so for this, we know that our initial velocity is this, 28 meters per second. What is the speed of the ball after 2.2 seconds? Now, because we're going vertical, our acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, but it's going to be negative because we're slowing down, going upwards. So, what equation fits this? It's going to be this one. Plug and chug. It's going to be about 6.4 meters per second. Choice two. All right, number 32. First, let's get rid of some of these things. Let's get rid of these tables. So we have room for 32. All right, number 32, we have a particle with a charge of three elementary charges moving through a potential difference of 4.5 volts. What is the chart? What is the change in electrical potential energy of the particle? So this is tricky because you're going to need to do this in two steps. Okay, so our charge is three elementary charges. One elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. But actually, because we're looking in terms of electron volts, let's keep it as 3E for simplicity's sake. You can convert it to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. You can convert it that way, but it might just make things a little trickier. Well, I'll show you why. And our voltage here is 4.5 volts. And we're looking for energy, which we could represent as W as work. Because voltage is equal to work over charge. So if we have here 4.5 volts is equal to W over 3E. Hey, when you multiply these things together, 3E times 4.5 volts equals W, you get 13.5 um, electron volts equals our work, our energy. That's our answer. That's a shortcut. You don't have to go through the whole 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 nonsense. But if you want to do it that way, you got to do it in two steps. If you keep it this way, this is the convenient way. This only works if you're in electron volts going from elementary charges to electron volts, then you keep it this way. Okay, almost there, almost there with this part. Which circuit has the largest equivalent resistance? So between series and parallel, you're gonna pick a series circuit because parallel circuits reduce resistance. So we're looking at choice one and three. And the winner here is choice three because you add them all up, this comes out to, um, 10 ohms, this one comes out to 8 ohms. 34, we're looking for the direction of motion of particle x at the instant shown. So this is a tricky question. If we imagine as our waves here, they're all moving to the right. So if you're pulling it along as a string, and x is a stationary point. So we gotta follow the direction of the wave that is now gonna pass through. If the wave is moving this way, that means these parts of the wave have already passed through x. These parts have yet to pass through x. And so because we have a transverse wave, that means the motion of the particle x is gonna be up and down. So we could cross off choice one and two and looking at choice three and four. So looking at our waves, since these are the parts of the wave that have yet to be covered by x, the next part it's gonna go is up. So it's choice three. And our final question of this part. 
which diagram represents magnetic field lines between two north magnetic poles. So likes repel, opposites attract. It must have been ingrained in your brain since childhood. Doesn't exactly apply to people. So we should see a repelling of poles, so it's not one or two. Now the direction of the field always goes out from north going into south. So we need to see arrows going out of north. So it's not choice three, it's choice four. And that's the end of part A. We still got plenty more questions to go through, but this is just one significant part of the test.